Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. I know you're wondering why we all asked you to come here. <laughs> That's decorations from another party. That was earlier today, and that was Nancy and the, and the foster grandparents program was, was in the tent here. Well, listen, thank you. And it's wonderful to see you all here today. I'm sure there have been many moments in the past few months when, uh, and there'll be more in the, in the weeks ahead, when you wondered if anyone noticed or cared about the nights that you work late or the mornings that you come in early. Well, I want you to know that some folks on Pennsylvania Avenue are mighty grateful to you and proud of you, too. We know how hard you're working and we just wanted to take a moment to express our gratitude and offer words of encouragement. I promised a word of encouragement, and I'll keep my promise. Like 1980, this election is going to give the pundits some real surprises because all, virtually all the issues are breaking our way. This administration They are. I just knocked on wood. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she, she's not superstitious. <laughs> but just don't throw a hat on the bed. And don't whistle in the dressing room. <laughs> well, we've set the course for, I think, a lasting recovery. We've cut taxes and regulations. We've brought down the growth of spending, inflation, helped bring sound monetary policies and we're rebuilding our defenses, and we've launched an important new crime initiative. Now, most important, we stopped complaining about a national malaise and the blaming of the American people for problems that were caused by the lack of leadership in Washington. Now, contrast these real accomplishments to the constant carping of the opposition. What are they offering the American people this November? Just more of the same, more of government spending, more taxes, more inflation, and ultimately a recession and unemployment, the twin legacies of the years of tax and tax and spend and spend. Just take one issue talked about by the opposition, our tax relief for the American people. They fought it in the Congress and are saying they want the third year tax cut repealed along with the historic reform of tax indexing. At 10.30 this morning, figures were released showing that personal spendings increased in September. And this was the kind of a beginning. They haven't been increasing. And you know, I couldn't help but think, when that came in, I listened to the panel shows on Sunday, and how many of the commentators were saying, well, They've tried the program now, the economic recovery program, and it hasn't worked. And they, they said that the people, if you cut their taxes, they'd have more money and they'd spend more and that would stimulate the economy. And I said, wait a minute. We came in four months into the fiscal year and ran the rest of the fiscal year on the budget that was created by the administration before. We spent most of that year trying to get our program passed. And before it was even signed into law, we had the drop into the recession. So there wasn't much that we had to do with that. And then the first tax cut was only 5%, and that was just a year ago. And then the next installment, the 10%, was only three months and three weeks ago. Now, you don't put more money in people's pockets just by signing the tax bill. You have to wait until that cut in taxes has begun to have an effect and they've begun to 
get the money in their pockets to spend. And sure enough, here it is September, and now they evidently are beginning to feel a little better about things, and they've started to spend their money. When the third year tax cut takes effect in July of 83, it'll mean $188 more for the average family of four in 83, $376 more in 84. Even more important, when the indexing of the tax brackets to the rate of inflation is added to this third cut, it will bring the total savings to more than $2,500 over five years for the average family of four. So the third year cut and the indexing if they're repealed by the Democratic Congress next year, which they say they want to do, would mean the loss of more than $2,500 for the average family of four. Now, Vice President Bush is out there campaigning hard for a cause. He's doing a magnificent job across the country. He dropped in for lunch today, and I don't know where he is now. He's gone again. <laughs> but George has come up with an interesting idea out on these trips. In some of the congressional districts, when he goes in there, he's gone in and presented the local Republican candidate an affidavit made out in the name of the Democratic opponent. And the affidavit reads, I pledge to put people above party to reject and disavow the attacks by the leadership of the National Democratic Party on the President's tax reduction program. I believe the everyday Americans are entitled to next year's tax cut and even larger tax reductions that will result from the historic reform of tax indexing. I further pledge that I will join the Republicans and the independents in actively resisting any attempts next year by the liberal leadership of the Democratic Party to take back the 83 tax cut and abolish tax indexing. And then George tells the Republican candidate that the next time he debates an opponent, he should bring along that affidavit and a notary public and try to get the opponent to sign the pledge. <laughs> I'm wondering whether every Democratic candidate in the country shouldn't be asked to take that pledge to promise the voters in his district or state that they reject the counsel of their own national leadership, that they disavow attempts by the national leaders to undermine the more than $2,500 tax break that we've won for the average family of four. You see, whether the cuts in taxes and spending, the balanced budget or the prayer amendment, the opposition is more out of touch with the people than they were in 1980. You know, they still play deep left field, in fact, so far out that they're back on a running track. So that's our job between now and November, to bear down to focus on the issues, to make the other guys take a stand on tax cuts, the crime bills, the balanced budget, the prayer amendment. Well, they, I don't think they will take that pledge. Why do they want to pile new tax burdens on the average American? Why are they holding up on crime legislation? Why don't they start representing the views of their constituents on the balanced budget and the prayer amendment instead of the views of a discredited elite that spent, borrowed, and taxed our country to the brink of disaster? These are the questions the Democratic Party is afraid to answer, but they're questions that we can take to the people. They're, they're the things that, with which them and your work can lead us to victory on November 2nd. The economy is on the move, and the Republican Party is on the move. And it's the most elementary rule of politics, but the most important thing we can do in this election is to make sure that the voters get to the polls. We need you to get out the vote on November 2nd. We need you, and the country needs you. And I gave you the one figure on people spending. I don't know whether you've heard this yet, but it was announced late this morning that housing starts, the construction of housing starts in September went up 14.6%. And I just met with officials of the housing industry in there. And uh, believe me, they're on our side. They know that what we're doing is going to put 
their people back to work. So God bless you all for what you're doing. And now we'll get off of here so we can hear some more of that wonderful music. We'll get to hear so well. If you don't already know it, this Marine Orchestra is considered one of the preeminent musical institutions in the United States.